Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm fresh out of a research coma to cover a recent barrage of articles saying that red and processed meats are okay to eat. My inbox was flooded, so you probably already know about this coordinated release of studies in the Annals of Internal Medicine, coming to the conclusion, which is pretty much the opposite conclusion of every major organization on Earth, that you should keep on eating processed meat. Here's the lead author literally saying that most people should keep eating these meats. For the majority of people, but not everyone, continuing their red and processed meat consumption is the right approach. Now they take the angle that there isn't a strong enough relationship, just enough to sow some doubt, which, you know, we've never seen that before. It's not exactly what the tobacco industry did. So we're gonna look at these studies, look what might be motivating this, see if there's any industry funding anywhere. And also we're gonna look at the reaction by the press, which I have to be honest, I'm pretty impressed with. A lot of pressing going on. Let's press on, let's keep going. It's like the first time the media didn't just blindly hop on any pro-animal product finding. I mean, look at this CNN article title. Red and processed meats are okay to eat, controversial new guidelines claim. Don't believe it, leading experts say. Wait, is this real reporting? A lot of articles even quoted the opposition front and center. Heck, WebMD quoted Harvard epidemiologist and nutrition professor Walter Willett saying, quote, it's the most egregious abuse of data I've ever seen. Damn, Walter, that was like the scientist equivalent of a body slam. Walter, you're a savage. So let's look at these studies. There were five of them, and four of them were looking at health outcomes, while one was just looking at attitudes toward meat. Spoiler alert, the result is that people like eating meat and don't want to give it up. Wow. These studies were done by a group of mostly statisticians called Nutrirects, and the four studies that looked at health outcomes, all of them had the same pattern. Now, these weren't strong enough findings to tell people to stop eating processed meat. So one of their studies reviewed experimental trials where people's diets are changed, but most of them looked at observations observational studies. Their experimental study review found almost nothing, but they referenced a lot of studies like this with researchers funded by the beef checkoff and pork checkoffs. And the main study, the main trial they looked at was the women's health trial, which didn't even look at processed meat at all. They just ate lower fat diets. It's totally bogus. On the other hand, their observational studies showed many benefits of not eating processed meat lower diseases, but didn't find a statistically significant lower all-cause mortality. However, by contrast, other studies like this recent one did in the BMJ, they found a 13% increased risk in all-cause mortality for every half serving of processed meat. Or how about this 2014 study, high versus low consumption equals 23% increased mortality. Or how about this, half a million people, again, high versus low, we're looking at 30% increased all-cause mortality for red meat and about 20% for processed meat, depending on the sex. But this disparity between their findings and their conclusions is why, as this PCRM article mentions, the True Health Initiative, 500 health experts, actually went to the Annals of Internal Medicine preemptively and told them to not release these articles, you know, to retract these papers. Of course, they published them anyway. But we have to start asking questions about the methodology. Well, it appears that it might be another case of over-adjusting. Back to the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Yeah, these were heavily adjusted findings. And when you adjust for things like cholesterol weight and blood pressure, you know, for something like heart disease, you're ignoring that meat can raise these and that they're not independent variables, they're actually connected. As I mentioned in my video on the topic, this is likely what happened with the recent vegetarians have higher risks of stroke. You know, they started out with lower stroke risks and because the vegetarians had such better levels of everything, they over adjusted and pretty soon they had higher rates of stroke. But in the case of these meat studies, they may have taken just horrible results for processed meat and made them less horrible because of all these things, cholesterol back a little bit, overweight back a little bit, Bit, high blood pressure back a little bit, and the salt content of processed meat is very high. They also use what they claim is a powerful methodology called GRADE, which gives different types of studies different levels of impact. And so an experimental study is worth more, which it should be, but it appears that they use this as an excuse to ditch a lot of studies that would have shown more of an increased risk and perhaps favor some studies that were funded by the meat industry. And again, one of those studies was just on how people felt good about eating meat and didn't want to give it up. And that appears to be all part of the record recommendations that they made to keep eating meat based off their authority, which doesn't exist. But I love how they refer to it as a weak recommendation, which is kind of weird. And I love this reaction by Stanford School of Medicine nutrition scientist Christopher Gardner. He says, why would you make a weak recommendation about eating red and processed meat? I'm completely flabbergasted. I'm also really worried about how dangerous this is. There's also a good quote from a nutrition official at the WHO who once again deemed processed meats a class 1A carcinogen based off certainty of the connection, by the way. They said, 
Guidelines are generally issued by authoritative bodies rather than self-selected groups. Throw in some shade. You might be thinking these recommendations just don't seem very logical, and that's because in a sense they are a bit of an appeal to ignorance fallacy. And that's the assumption of a conclusion or fact based primarily on a lack of evidence to the contrary. So because they believe there isn't enough evidence, they actually came to the conclusion to recommend eating meat? Okay. At best, they should be concluding no recommendation at all, and based off of their findings, they should be saying eat less, and that's where I think some bias comes in, which we'll touch on in a second. And it's worth putting this in context that recommendations for nutrition are really hot right now. And that's because the USDA is forming their 2020 dietary guidelines, did a recent video on how their recommendations to avoid plant milk for all children. It turns out all the organizations behind that were funded by the National Dairy Council. Funny. So we have to ask, is there somebody perhaps behind this organization, Nutrarex, that could be industry or could have some motivations? Let's just do a quick investigation. First of all, it's a pretty recently formed organization, which would be perfect to not have a tainted history, but they already appear to have a bit of a tainted history when it comes to sugar. As NPR mentioned in this article, they criticize recommendations to limit refined sugar using very similar language, actually. They say, quote, that paper published online in 2016 was funded by the International Life Sciences Institute, a nonprofit group funded by large food and beverage companies that has come under scrutiny for its role in shaping food policy. Yes, the ILSI is actually funded directly by Coca-Cola and Pepsi, which I thought didn't agree on anything, but I guess there's one thing that they agree on. It's money. <laughs> Yes, the lead author, Johnston, was actually a consultant from them. And from that paper, it's a bit worrisome to see that there were actually updates on his financial disclosures, because it seems to be a trend to hide your disclosures until you have to. That is what happened with Emma Derbyshire in the British Medical Journal with her choline write up. And of course, as her conflicts were updated, she was funded by the meat advisory panel and the egg industry. So we also see a crap ton of other industry connections, including Nestle, which he claims is not related to the sugar paper. And another industry connection mentioned, not as nefarious, but Johnson has also done studies showing that probiotics are good, funded directly by the probiotic industry. In fact, six out of 10 of the publications that are nutritional on Nutrarex page are probiotics, funded by the probiotics industry. So nutritionally, this company is 60% industry funded at least. So it shows this is the kind of guy that you can go to as a company and say, do a study on my product, maybe make it look good. I don't know how much they push that, but he comes out with studies that look good on your product. Worth mentioning. But here's one connection that seems like it might be the smoking gun, and that is AgriLife and Nutrarex. A convenient six months ago, quote, Texas A&M AgriLife joins International Nutrarex Consortium. And quote, members collaborate to improve methodology and establish higher standard for dietary guidelines. Yeah, for making money off dietary guidelines. Texas A&M is a massive umbrella organization with a $216 million a year research wing that specializes in beef. Literally, right there and a $115 million extension budget, which is basically the beef industry working with the university and beyond. I mean, they launched an international beef initiative. They hold beef conferences. Oh, how about, how about a beef boot camp funded by the beef checkoff? And this is also the bacon industry, what processed meat fear affects most. Here they are, and they work with the pork board, yet Nutrarex failed to disclose this connection at all. And the studies are definitely trying to appear neutral. They have no source of funding and the conflicts of interest on basically everybody are blank. So there's no obvious beef organization right in these studies, but with disclosure nowadays, it can be really sketchy. It's not impossible that even though there was no funding, the organization Nutrition Rex is as an umbrella getting funding by these industries. So you can say the study wasn't funded by industry, no individual author was funded by industry, but it happened because industry gave them money and nobody just decides for the fun of it to do five studies on processed meat. <laughs> Now studies are expensive. You don't just do them because you feel like it, but this is a black box, so there's a lot of speculation going on here. Another simple explanation could just be personal bias. 11 out of 14 of the researchers eat processed meat regularly. I mean, one of them says that they're paleo. But I don't think you get a massive team of researchers together to do five studies just because you're on the paleo diet. No, I don't think that's the case. And I wanna talk a little bit about the journal, The Annals of Internal Medicine. It's worth mentioning that this is the same journal that published the studies behind all of the butter is back stuff back in 2014. So they go with a little bit of a sensationalist angle and going back to the PCRM, I hate to rely on them too much, but they're experts and they did a great job on this. They say the journal would benefit from a press frenzy because it will increase their impact factor as a journal. 
I mean, guess what we're talking about right now? The annals of internal medicine. They won. Or did they? Because what they don't realize is also going up is their crap factor. Everyone's like, why the heck did they publish this? Because of this, some are now beginning to refer to them as the annals of internal medicine. Yeah, I went there. All credibility lost. And I just want to mention, because it goes without saying, that again, this is against the consensus. We have all these major organizations, the American Cancer Society, heck, even the American Heart Association, which gets money from the dairy and meat industry, saying to eliminate processed meat. And internationally, again, we have the WHO and also the UK's National Health Service and more saying to not eat processed meat. And the American Cancer Society actually went as far as to calculate that by cutting down on red and processed meat, we would save 8,000 lives out of every million people from cancer. That's big. PCRM actually just filed a federal petition to start a lawsuit against the Annals of Internal Medicine. But can we talk about Neil Bernard's face here? He is so miffed. He will definitely slap you with that piece of paper. In the end, this Armada of Studies has major problems. First, how their conclusions didn't really match their findings, how their recommendations were then fallacious, how they were likely over adjusting for these things like cholesterol to make processed meat look not as bad. And again, it's all very possible, really very likely that this was funded by the beef and pork industries funneled through AgriLife. There's probably something that's not being disclosed here, but we don't know. I mean, they may or may not be an industry research group that is for hire to make recommendations in favor of whatever unhealthy food that you sell. And just looking at the way that guy recommends meat at the end is just something cringy and financial about it. I don't know. Continuing their red and processed meat consumption is the right approach. Like he's like, oh yeah, I can't forget to recommend that people keep eating meat. Anyway, if you happen to be working in this organization, Nutrirex, and you know of a connection, you can be the whistleblower and email me. I implore you, blow the whistle. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe. Let me know down below what you thought about all this crazy nonsense. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.